what the funnel you just talked about, right? You know, in re- in relation to going on Joe Rogan and and getting that influx of people. What does that funnel look like? You know, what what do you envision that funnel looking like to be ready? Okay, so there's what's good for me and my company, and then there's also what's good for Cardano. Because if I go on Rogan, I'm not just going to talk about Cardano. I'm gonna probably spend more time talking about other stuff than Cardano because you know it's an interesting conversation. Talk about hunting and bison and mushrooms and all kinds of. It'll be fun. We'll, we'll break the all time record. You know, uh, so what you need is you need a clear call to action that if people are legitimately interested in the vision and philosophy of Cardano, first, you need to demonstrate you've actually done something. It's not just aspirational. So we have done a lot, but I'd like to be a little further along. For example, I'd like to have a fully functional stable coin and peer-to-peer lending marketplace ready to go. So people, when they go, they can pull out their phone, download a beautiful mobile wallet, you know, and then they can actually see right there a way to lend money to someone in Kenya or something like that. I'd like them to be able to create real-time an identity and use that in their workflow, this type of stuff. Now, there already are some ways to do this, and they're being used at scale of millions, but they're not user-friendly enough that an average Joe Rogan listener would want to do that. So that's an example of a benchmark. Then, you know, the right websites, the right user experience with those. So when they go to cardano.org, they know exactly where to go, and they know exactly what route to take and where they can participate from, you know, volunteer, what have you, better voting experience, and these types of things. So a lot of user experience needs to be improved, and a lot of accessibility needs to be improved, and also the information needs a little bit more time to get refined and polished and made accessible and so forth. Uh, so those are examples of things that would go into that strategy. And then also it has to be relatable, because no one goes to a cryptocurrency if they're serious in a non-speculative way unless there's something connected to a problem they want to solve. For example, let's say you're a doctor uh, or a pharmaceutical researcher, and you're looking at electronic medical record system. You say, boy, I would love to have a system where I can find out how many asthma patients have COVID and what that compares to the regular population in terms of mortality. And I don't want it to do that, find that information by having to negotiate with a bunch of EMRs and have a data room and somebody actually see the de-anonymized data, uh, I, I would like to just operate on encrypted data. Probably that in some way will be facilitated by a blockchain-based solution at some point. So that's an example of a real-life problem that has enormous commercial value, enormous research value, can't be solved at the moment. Yeah. You know, uh, Or you as a consumer, Let's say you know you go on vacation and, and you have a lovely time in the Maasai Mara in Kenya. You're on safari. Elephant charges the, the van, knocks it over. You get crushed. Your legs are broken. You're unconscious. They take you to the closest hospital they can find. Pretty grim story. And you're there, and, you're, and, and they're trying to figure out your medical history. They don't even know your blood type. And, and how do they get your medical records? How did that get transmitted from wherever there is in the United States to there in Kenya so they can actually know a little bit about you and hopefully treat you a little bit better? Well, they can't. There's no way to solve that problem right now in modern society, but you can solve that with a blockchain. So stuff like that, that's how you get people interested. You know, R- Rogan, maybe he's not going to get any of this blockchain stuff, but he's a hunter. Every hunter has problems with hunting tax. Every hunter has problems with that whole area. Well, that whole system can be put on a blockchain. Made a hell of a lot more fair. You, you go through that whole example of why it's better. And then what you do, he gets it. He says, oh, wow, that is really cool. Half of America thinks the elections are corrupted because of Trump. Whether you agree with that or not, no matter. The perception of a lack of legitimacy destroys democracy. The solution is not to say those people are bad people and stupid suck it up buttercup uh, any more so than when the other side was saying that Russia stole the election for Trump and to tell them to suck it up. This, you restore legitimacy by adopting new systems that have inclusive accountability. So why don't you talk about how a voting system would work where you can check your own vote, make sure it's been counted, and it's transnational, meaning that a government can't tamper with it or, th- or a private company can't tamper with it or something like that. You don't have to trust somebody. You can check yourself and you have assurance for that. turns out the same problem to make sure you have money on a blockchain is to make sure there's a vote there because votes can be tokens, right? You know, so uh, so that kind of way, I think, is what you need. And you need really well-developed 
crystallized talking points, use cases, and experiences to drag people there. And we're, we're and that's why I kept saying Rogan after Gogan, because that's where those really well-developed things start crystallizing. And what I can do is act as an advertiser in chief for the ecosystem. <laughs> It'd be real boring if I talked about myself. How about I talk about, hey, there's this great project that's doing this, and there's this great project doing this. And then suddenly these small projects get you know, an 11 million person audience now looking at them, going to their website, will crash all their websites. If I crash their websites, I'm the happiest guy in the world. (laughs) And so I want to get to that point. So it's not just about our progress and where we think the funnel needs to be. We need to give the ecosystem a little bit of time to mature to a point where they can really showcase the value that they've created and then go do that. And it'll be a great conversation and hopefully get invited back like with Friedman uh, and these things. And Also, it provides a lot of real enduring tangible value to the ecosystem. And then people don't look at Cardano as yet another cryptocurrency or speculative instrument. They look at Cardano as a framework for dreams to be built, as a framework to do things a little differently and to restore trust and credibility in institutions and systems that lack them uh, and uh, make the world a better place.